Hey guys, it's Reenactment Day here, and this is going to be another episode of GI Reenacting 101. And in this episode, I'm just going to show you pretty much everything that was carried in the haversack. Well, at least everything that I carry in it. Most of the stuff that I have in there is what they would carry um, in there for a basic field pack, not marching order. But I will, let, well, let's get into that. Now, let's start with the most outer part of the haversack. This is the meat uh, meat ca can pouch or the mess kit pouch. And in here, you would have your mess kit. Mess kit is just a uh, pop it open, fold it over, kind of uh, mess kit. So, you can see there's two parts. There's like a frying pan area. You can see that I've used for frying something. And a uh, just two part divider. This is different than the World War One version. The World War One version, the model nineteen ten, had a very shallow one of these, a uh, shallow area, and this was more like a plate instead of this divider section. Now the model nineteen eighteen was a bit deeper and it had a thing that was a bit more dished, but they were still one piece and not divided like that. So that is the mess kit, and once I get that all together again, you can see the thickness of it, and the date on there, and the manufacturer. Continuing inside the mess kit pouch, you have the you know standard issue fork. Not too fancy with that. You got the spoon. Right here. And of course you have the knife. Now the fork and the knife would be in a leather pouch, but I lost the, the uh, fork one. So as you can see, just a nice little uh, knife. This is an original from 1941, so that's pretty cool. I don't even know where I got this, so it's fun. But again, it goes into the leather pouch. Now that's pretty much it. You could probably carry a couple other things in there. Not too big of items, but a couple smaller items in there. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything you would have in there. You could have maybe a ration in there instead of the mess kit or something. Now, for the tool, you could. there's a variety of tools, but for now, I have the Model 1943 folding shovel. As you can see, just... As the name suggests, a folding shovel. Now, as you can see, we're also right here. Now, there's no paint right here. A lot of GIs would sharpen this edge, or just an edge, pretty much basically dependent on what hand you're dominant with, and use this in hand to hand combat if they ever needed to, which not many of them did need to use it in hand to hand combat, but they had the option to. So that is the folding shovel. It is carried in this carrier. I'm going to lift the dot like that. Now, moving in, well, actually, starting over here, you can see you got the. I have the bayonet inside the pouch right now instead of along so this side because it keeps it from rattling around or flopping around because it does not reach this hole. But as you can see, standard issue M1 bayonet. This could early war, this could be the 05 bayonet, and it's about the same time as this throughout the entire war. This could be the model 1905E1 bayonet, or the cut down bayonet. So just, just a couple things. And undo this strap here. This opens up the haversack, and you can see there's a few more little straps you gotta undo. Uh, this bottom strap's already undone because, as you saw, I had it holding on the bottom of the shovel so the shovel won't flap around as well. It's just something that GIs did. But you can see this strap goes to this little hook thing, and that's how you tighten it. But opening up the haversack a bit more is very annoying. This is why you'd have your basic stuff up on top. And 
Inside, I just have a couple field manuals just for some reading and, you know, stuff like that. Over here, you can see the bayonet is inside the haversack. You got the rations. Now, these are not full. These are empty. But you got rations that you could carry. Three of them. Uh, breakfast, supper, dinner. And pretty much this was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But they called... I always forget what one it is, but they they called, I think it was supper, dinner, or supper, lunch. They called lunch, supper. There we go. That was harder to say than it should have been. We got the three rations in here. There's cardboard boxes. And inside the cardboard boxes is a cardboard protective box for the... This would be covered in wax. And that would help keep the food uh, dry and... Um, fresh or inside we also have you could have a couple pairs of socks along the side you could have a scarf for warm weather you would have some basic warm weather equipment in here and ex I have an extra t-shirt in here for pretty much basic things so when you are in mark or when you're in uh, com when you have this as a combat pack you have rations for a few days, you have some basic warm weather equipment, you have some uh, extra clothing in there in case any of your clothing gets wet, especially socks. Like uh, Soldiers probably carry several things of socks, several pairs of socks. Um, another thing they could carry their personal items in is a ditty bag. They could have like just basic toothbrush in here. You can see it's just a drawstring kind of pack, a uh, little bag, and they would like roll this up and put it uh, up at the top of the haversack, and they would put the stuff that they need the most in here so they can quickly grab it when needed. So I'm going to actually put roll this back up and put it in there because I did not have it in there. Now I just kind of wrap this around and tie this. They probably wouldn't need to tie this. But, just a basic tie. But, removing the haversack, or removing everything from the haversack, you can see all the different uh, flaps and stuff, and old sewing. And, there's nothing too much about this. You see the hooks right here, and these hooks go around and down to here. These, hook, these would hook to the pack tail if you had it on, but in World War II, a lot of soldiers didn't have the pack tail on because they didn't need it. So we'll put that back on there and put everything back into the haversack, like so. And then there's the folding it and strapping it all down, which you want to make sure that's in there too, your bayonet uh, scabbard, make sure that's alongside. Once you get everything strapped in, you could probably just kind of adjust it by hand a little bit. But that's pretty much it. The haversack. Put that in, pull that over, adjust that down. Uh, I for I'm surprised I forgot to mention this is the Model 1928 haversack. The Model 1910 haversack was seen in World War II, but in less numbers than the newer Model 1928. And they were very similar, like the only difference was like this uh, meat can pouch right here, and the buckles, and also the strap on the back, and those were the only differences. So they're pretty much the same pack. You put the working stuff back in there. There's a slightly bigger pouch, a little loop right here. You see these loops where the silverware go. Silverware go. There's a slightly bigger one for the spoon, because the spoon is slightly bigger. And everything fits in nicely into a haversack. 
Now this haversack was a pain in the butt and many of the soldiers that were issued it agreed with that and said this was a piece of junk. So a lot of time actually in the field you can see soldiers ditching the haversack and sticking with like a pair of combat suspenders and a gas mask bag. But uh, still haversacks are seen and you do need one for reenacting. Because most uh, reenactment groups, well, army reenactment groups, pretty much would like you to have a haversack at certain events because it looks better. Like at D Day, they would have all their haversacks and stuff like that. And they're just a nice. You, you can bring stuff to reenactments in this thing. So. And that is going to be it for this video. You can see I just put everything back into the haversack. A little piece of junk. And that will be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you have any video ideas, please put them down in the comments. If you have any questions about this, again, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.